All right, welcome to Typology Gifts. This is Dan. I'm here with Jacopo. And hey guys. and uh, uh, we we were discussing um, video game preference and personality type. And this is something I thought about, but it, you mentioned it, and I was like, you know, we could do a video on that because it's like it's it's something that I don't feel confident enough to do a full video by myself about. Okay. But if you've thought about it, I feel like we could talk about it, and there could be some kind of conversation that we could have about uh, this, because because uh, yeah. we both thought about it. Um, so if I have half baked thoughts and you have half baked thoughts, or yours might be more fully baked than mine, even I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Sure. So 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 what ha have you? What have you? Oh, by the way, and for 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 those who are just joining, um. Who didn't watch the previous video? I, w I would recommend you watch the previous two videos, which is uh, where, where uh, the, the typing session. Um, and Jacopo is a, a, presumably a, a, an ESTP. Uh, so you said 75, 70 percent is is what you're thinking. Probably 70 percent in that direction. That was my guess. It's a pretty good guess. May not be a hundred. You know, we don't we can't say 100 percent, but maybe it's a good guess. Um, and then for myself, INFJ. So I guess we would so Jacopo and I would also would would both fall into the the same cognitive preferences uh which would be introverted intuition extrovert sensing extrovert feeling introvert thinking uh just maybe in different prefer just different order but same directional kind of preference so I I would imagine we'll probably have that NITI kind of discussion where we're having a lot of ideas and we're probably we're probably I uh, probably arguing and debating those ideas so um, so it could be a very interesting I think interesting discussion so uh, do you have any kind of um, a, I we didn't really go into it because I was like well we can make a whole video about that uh, but but what do you have some kind of premise or theory or, or, or whatever uh, relating to or, or relating to personality type and, vi and video games and, and maybe genres and which genres uh, certain types are going to gravitate towards? Well, uh, sometimes I've thought about it. Uh, uh, I would say rather than speaking in types uh, because uh, right, sure. uh, everyone is uh, an individual and so it has uh, different preferences. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anything we will discuss about it uh, Tonight uh, won't, will be, I mean, low or uh, perfectly right. on spot. I think uh, rather than thinking about type, uh, we could we could probably think uh, about uh, the cognitive preferences mm -hmm. in functions. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, I think uh, there are so many different video games uh, in the world, so many different genres, uh, and I think. Uh, uh, People end up uh, following some tangents, some some preferences based mm -hmm. on their cognitive functions. Mm -hmm. Speaking about me, as a probably presumably as a extroverted sensing dom, uh, dom, we'll say, I think I'm more uh, focused on feeling the action, feeling the adrenaline, feeling uh, things mm -hmm. that uh, could possibly be human but can materially be can do, can be done. Perfect example is uh, the Uncharted series. I always mm -hmm. loved it since I was a child. Mm -hmm. The idea of going uh, searching for treasures, uh, finding traps, uh, defeating enemies, and so on. Mm -hmm. And games that gives me this adrenaline rush, especially in the competitive more uh, sector, I would say, I think uh, are pretty fitting for uh, an extroverted sensing. And uh, if uh, probably with it also has something in common with the auxiliary preference. So what I mean is, uh, for example, I can see an ESFP uh, being attracted in uh, these uh, same genres, uh, but uh, if the ESTP is preferred to just go on, do two, three matches uh, uh, full of adrenaline, full of uh, charge, full of uh, energy, uh, probably, uh, yes, the ESFP uh, people will lean much more towards uh, cooperation, I would say. Hmm. Uh, an example I can think about it is uh, uh, League of Legends. Probably yeah. an ESTP will uh, enjoy much more uh, having to fight to win. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not that 
ESFPs won't probably enjoy it, but right. maybe uh, ESFPs will uh, prefer much more the part that uh, regards all the teamwork and the mechanics mm. of cooperation and collaboration with the friends or people in the team. Mm. Just uh, this could be a good point to start our conversation about it. That's very interesting. That's very interesting, and that's that's a nuance that I wouldn't necessarily be able to observe to as easily as probably easy as you could, um, because that's a, that's such a subtle nuance almost. You know, uh, what other what other kinds of games do you think ESFPs would uh, would appreciate, or or SEFI frequent users? They may not be ESFPs, but they probably use those two functions a lot. Well, I think uh, other kind of games could be probably uh, generally. I think uh, the explorer temperament, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the SPs uh, probably will lean much more to our multiplayer, and that's uh, mm. I think I I think firmly in. Yes, FPs. If we want to go on the single player style of gaming, uh, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably they will enjoy a lot of uh, games that uh, regards role playing, mm, putting yourself in clothes of the character and uh, feeling what they're feeling, feeling what their people uh, around them in the game are feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I will go this way probably on that type, while probably ISTP is. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, we'll definitely enjoy the adrenaline rush from the competitive games uh, or mm -hmm. the action games, uh, but I think uh, they could be much more attracted those to those two titles like, uh, you know, Minecraft, uh, when mm -hmm. you need to create something to build something. I know it's a bit stereotypical, but I have seen a lot of ISTPs having this interest in building and. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like Great the Sim teams, uh, Sim City, uh, right? Or like City yeah, Skylines. City 2 is a perfect example. Yeah, city builders in general, mm -hmm. colony management, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. Maybe uh, while... Civ 5, maybe? Civ 6? Yeah, yeah, Civ 5, Civ 6, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. While probably ISFPs, in my opinion, uh, will also enjoy much more. Uh, I want to be specific about it because I'm just thinking in generalities. I don't mm -hmm. think that uh, you we are this type, you play these games. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> right. I've but, probably played uh, all the games we're talking about. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, probably ISFPs uh, on the other side will prefer much more uh, uh, conceptual games, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Something I can see in common with uh, INFPs. Uh, games like, I don't know, Stanley Parable uh, mm -hmm. games that makes the exploration uh, part of what about uh, like Scribble Knots, a game yeah, a game where you have too. to like create to kind of play the game, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. These are my thoughts about uh, the SP ones, uh, mm -hmm. probably. Or um, there, there's other ones that come to mind. Um, well, it's an old it's an older one, but Mario Paint, you know. I mean, any any game where you where you yeah. where the objective is to uh, is to be creative, sort of. I, I think The Sims, probably ESPs, uh, or sorry, uh, the FSP types uh, probably really would really like The Sims, uh, because it's sort of about the uh, emotions of the characters. It's about the emotions of the other characters. It's about uh, I mean, I think there's a the Sims the the Sims is a very interesting series because I think it can be attractive to a lot of different types. Um, it can be attractive to the builder types; they might spend a lot of time building their environment. Or it can be attractive to the um, the the person the the type who like people because you create a person and you sort of live in that little world and you kind of create that world and you have other people you interact with and stuff. So it, it's it, so here's a question I have for you because I've thought about this with Minecraft, um, and this is kind of a this is kind of a tangent. So I'm gonna take it I'm gonna take it in a slightly different direction. And I want to tell you about myself and a, and, and, and a contrast with myself and, and my best friend. My best friend's an ISFJ, and I'm an INFJ. Um, he does very well and enjoys very much open world kind of games. 
Um, he 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 can beat them. He can he can play them a lot. Um, he's already beaten Cyberpunk. Um, he's beaten a number of the other you know Skyrim and 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 like GTA and Red Dead and things like that and and Fallout. And it's like when I play those games, I almost gravitate more towards the on rails experiences because. Uh, for me, it's about the narrative arc. You know, it's about the, being able to see the beginning, middle, and end, and seeing the some conclusiveness of the story. And then when it's too open-ended, I think that's an extroverted intuitive thing, where the extroverted intuitives like to see lots of possibilities, and they like to take it in this direction, play through it, finish it. Like my son has, my son's an ENTP. He has finished Fallout 4 like four or five times now. I mean, he's like, well, time for my daily Fallout 4 creation. He, I see, I look over there, he's creating a new Fallout 4 game, like uh, like almost every day, it seems like. Um, and, he, and he's very fast. He can just play through the whole thing, and, and he's trying it all these different ways, and that's so different from how I play games, you know? Like, I play it one time, I want to see the ending but I want to I want to get the rich experience and I want to finish it and I want to see the arc and I want to cry at the end <laughs> and uh and, and that's so and and like I was very interested in Minecraft for a few years you know early on because I was like wow this is really amazing then I burned out on it and and um and of course now it's 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 still all the rage but I've noticed Minecraft, like like these other uh, kind of open world uh, Western RPGs, are are very open ended, you know. So, uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about the introverted intuitive preference versus extroverted intuitive preference? You know, my my best friend being an ISFJ would have extroverted intuitive pre preference. Mm -hmm. He would have pre prefer probably more open open-ended kind of experiences um he clearly does just from talking to him um than i do uh i i i like to be i like to be on, more on rails honestly i i like to i like to have a little bit more of a structured uh experience because for some reason for me it feels like it's a little more curated and like like a little more like i'm gonna get to see this intentional arc happen you know so what do, what do you think about that Hmm, that's a, an interesting uh, analysis because it's something I can relate definitely to. I like open world, but I generally, even in open world games, uh, I follow up a line. I want to start from, I want to go from the start to the finish. I can do some side quests and so on. Uh, the perfect example for this is one of my best friends who is uh, INTP. Mm -hmm and uh, he really loves exploration games open-ended games uh, he also mm -hmm. likes so much uh, point and click adventures mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. uh, it puts uh, his yeah 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 mm -hmm. but, i've never finished uh, one of those game. by the way <laughs> no, i like grim fandango <laughs> uh, day of the tentacle the, the, you know monkey island there's all these like the point yeah. and click adventures I i've never I finished one them. of them i never yeah, finished me one too of them. me too okay definitely <laughs> And uh, for example, in my, in my, I can give you my example. I am a fan of the Legend of Zelda series. I'm really a fan of it. It's yeah. really one of my favorite uh, series, uh, together with Yakuza. Yeah. Series. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Breath of the Wild. I hated it. I really <laughs> oh really? Hated it completely. Yeah, completely. <laughs> oh man, I loved so... it. <laughs> yeah, and it was so. Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful game. It's yeah. Probably a pillar for uh, it set the new bars from the future uh, open world explorations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but for me it was uh, simply too easy to get lost in it i mean mm -hmm. uh, i some at some point i started to search on guide because then i really wanted to finish it uh, for example to find the master's word uh, when yeah yeah, yeah. Food, uh, so i wanted to <laughs> say okay when i find this armor when i find this weapon okay let's go because, yeah uh, yeah for me, it was too open-ended. I prefer uh, being uh, on rails too, to be honest, uh -huh, uh -huh. because uh, it's something I can get better with. Uh, I gave you in the video before the example of uh, competitive games. Uh, well, I like competitive games because the objective is one. Right. And you're. It's your over. You you do it and it's yeah. over. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And I like uh, generally these short time uh, spans of uh, playing. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I need uh, a streamline to enjoy a game generally, and I like competitive games because if I can get ber better, for example, a game I'm playing so much with my girlfriend too is uh, Hunt Showdown, a uh, shooting battle royale, very interesting. What's the game called? It's... Huh? What's Showdown. the game? Uh, Hunt Showdown. Hunt Showdown? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's an I'm interesting not... I'm not twist familiar on with the that. shooters. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that the one. Guys, the May Crisis uh, with the Crytek. Oh, engine. Crisis! Is it Crytek? Yeah, it's uh, with the Crytek engine. It's a nice twist on the battle royale because uh, basically ah. your hunter can die, and uh, it's uh, quite tactical. Even if generally I can, I go all in and generally end up dying, but it's really funny. Uh -huh. And I love these games because uh, they give you an objective, and you must get better to complete. Uh, the objective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I do. And, I do. Uh, it's something uh, with your observation. Now that you let me think about it, it's something I really noticed in other people. Uh, SC and I combo generally uh, really like being more a bit streamlined, having some ways to follow for different part for different motives. Probably. Uh, We'll say uh, an ENFJ like you will like it to see how the character develops, how the story arc gets, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. While introvert, extrovert, and intuitives really like much more creating things and exploring all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, one friend of mine, uh, that's uh, the INTP I mentioned in the video before, the one I went uh, by uh, cycling with him. Minecraft, I don't know how much time he spent on Minecraft uh, because he just uh, wanted to exhaust all the possibilities. He yeah. To study uh, with the redstone, so to make the yeah. computer uh, <laughs> computer sellers uh, and right. so on. And I think, yeah, it goes, uh, I will say, to put it simple, any wants to explore all the possibilities in the games, like in their life, in their thoughts, they like to see mm -hmm. everything that could possibly come. Uh, probably uh, there'll be the people that say, oh, what if I do this? What if I do that? What if I do that mm -hmm. uh, in the same situation? Mm -hmm. While uh, probably extroverted sensor, uh, uh, extroverted sensory preference uh, will go much more to feel the rush of it in the moment or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. follow a streamline because the story arc develops and evolves uh, and so on. So I think I can agree with your uh, your uh, opinion. For example, my girlfriend uh, is uh, yes, an uh, ISFJ. One of her favorite series is uh, The Sims <laughs> because, uh, right. well, she grew with The Sims uh, yeah, I mean, she thinks she had the same since the second installment with yeah. the DLC, so she really has an affection for it. Yeah, her yeah. favorite part of it, it's creating things, building things. Right. Really, with her with a, a group of friends when she was a, a child, they spent all the afternoons to create houses to put uh, to put. Uh, showers, creating bathrooms, creating different rooms, mm -hmm. uh, put furniture in them, uh, so... And it yeah, doesn't get I much, think... it doesn't get much more open-ended than that, does it? Yeah. Because <laughs> you can really go anywhere with it, right? Yeah, you can exactly. make anything, make any character, make any kind yeah. of house, and then of course you have all the career choices. Yeah. <laughs> and then they've added all those expansions, so it, it's just this very choose your own adventure kind of thing yeah, yeah so uh, what about extroverted thinkers versus introverted thinkers do you think that there's any kind of difference between what extroverted thinkers ver will prefer in a game versus an introverted thinker well uh, in my opinion uh, extroverted thinkers and thinkers are the perfect people uh, to play RTS, uh, real-time strategy games, mm -hmm. uh, they, to make decisions on a short-based notice, uh, to just go 
and make the perfect execution of the plan uh, to go and destroy, for example, for example, in StarCraft, uh, destroy the other uh, enemy base. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I can really see much uh, the extrovert thinkers much, much more attracted to, for example, real-time strategy games mm -hmm. rather than introverted thinkers. And I'm speaking for myself. I love uh, the adrenaline of the moment, mm -hmm. but... Uh, uh, I like the action games because uh, it make you okay, can give it can help you make split second decisions. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the long run, uh, I will say I probably will prefer, uh, for example, Japanese RPGs for the turn-based combat because I have more possibilities to think uh, how to perfectly execute my com my my attack. While, for example, me in RTS. Uh, is a sucker, a complete sucker. I had a hard time finishing Warcraft 3 and its expansion, even the lowest difficulty for, for the um, because for me it was quite hard, much more hard to make split second decisions and organization on a short notice mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. thinking about the strategy. Yeah, yeah, so interesting that you mentioned Warcraft 3 because I believe I completed Warcraft 3, but I don't think I... I, I think the expansion was the thro Frozen Throne, right? Yeah, the Frozen Throne. Um, I, I think I got most of the way through that or something. Um, I think I was drawn into that by the story, actually. I, yeah, I, I think too. I was interested in the story. Character and story, me too. Yeah, and... Um, that's interesting. It's interesting. I... I wonder how extroverted thinkers play RTSs differently than introverted thinkers. Now that I think about it, um, hmm. okay, you give me a lot of food for thought. I, I I haven't thought of that. I haven't thought about how do extroverted thinkers play uh, video games. How do they play RTS games? How do they play? Because my like like my dad is ISTJ. He he just was not interested in video games at all. Um, he had, well, with a few exceptions. So this is interesting. So my dad actually did like some video games. Um, there was a few that he liked. One, he liked Battle Chess mm -hmm. from the 80s. Uh, he also liked Dig Dug, strangely enough. I don't know if you know Dig Dug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he liked Galaga, actually, which I would think would be an extroverted sensing kind of game because it's very much about reacting and things. But... He liked it. He liked Galaga. Um, so it's hard for me to look at and go, I don't know what extroverted sensing... Like, there's a number of extroverted sensors in my... Uh, sorry, extroverted thinkers in my life. I, I, I hope I wasn't... If I was saying extroverted sensors a few times there, it was probably extroverted thinkers I was thinking of. There's a few extroverted thinkers in my life I know of that do not like video games at all do you think that introverted thinkers are more interested in video games than extroverted thinkers well uh, for me it depends uh, on several things for example if we're, we we're talking about uh, extroverted thinkers uh, who also have a preference for uh, like uh, ESTJs or ISTJs, and they have grown with video games, probably they will still be attracted by it. One of my friends is uh, an ISTJ, and he played video games since he was uh, a kid, and he always finds some time in his uh, strict schedule to play video mm -hmm. games and relax a bit, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So, uh, probably uh, it depends on the situation, how you have grown up, uh, especially when we talk about uh, introverted sensing uh, in, with the extrovert thinking and introverted sensing combo. Mm -hmm. um, while ENTJs and INTJs, uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't know many much of them. Uh, I think um, the biggest problem with uh, extrovert thinking dominance it's because they are so strictly on the schedule that they really need uh, because they're so organized they really need to put a space for video games uh, so if mm. they have other hobbies probably they will 
end up preferring Euler, obviously, mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. I would say. I don't think it's a uh, type uh, preference, I would say. It's more like um, simply how you've grown up, uh, I would say. Uh, but definitely, I can say that uh, all the introverted thinkers I know in my life, uh, at some point in their life, have been interested in video games. Uh, yeah 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 uh, that, i agree sure. with that i agree with that i i think across the board i think anyone that i know who's an introverted thinker is 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 also uh interested in video games so what what do you think it is about video games that that attracts introverted thinkers uh probably the mechanics that uh, the structure and the mechanics that are behind it uh the example i put before like uh, istps that we can stereotypically see the istps in his garage mm -hmm. uh, uh working on his motorcycle and so on uh, mm -hmm. can be the same applied to video games so mm -hmm. maybe they really want uh, to uh understand how video games work and generally uh, this is a tendency i have noticed that uh, i can be uh, sure about it but i generally uh, noticed that uh, introverted thinkers at some point in their life uh, ended up studying something from uh, programming uh, and computer programming. Uh, it's something I did too before uh, going to marketing. I started studying some programming because they really like to know how things work, so how things operate, and uh, something like uh, big and elaborate like a computer and a machine uh, uh, that gives you so many possibilities is something that will definitely end up uh, in some way or another uh, uh, attracting them to understand it. And I can say the same, it can be applied to video games. Mm -hmm. I will say, I don't know if you agree with me on these. Well, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I, I would need more time to think about it. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm asking you because I, I I don't have a theory on it, I guess. I, I'm interested in, in knowing your theories, you know. Um, I mean, you can come at it from any different angle, you know. I mean, I think if, if you come at it from, like, the sensing angle, like, like there's there's attractiveness from video games. I think there's something for everybody, you know? It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. In the previous yeah. videos, you mentioned the Barnum, Barnum effect, and, and P.T. Barnum was said that there's something for everyone, right? And I think video games really... And that's why I think Minecraft is so popular, actually, because there is something for everyone. Um, there, there There is something for the sensing people. There's action, there's excitement, right? And then the introverted sensors, you know, there's sort of, like, there's organization and there's patterns and there's repeatability right and then from the thinkers you know from the introverted thinkers there's there's redstone right i mean you can build your own logic and stuff and then from the extrovert thinkers you can come up with you can build a server you can own it you can run it you can organize it you can do things with it um from the feeler stand standpoint from the extroverted feelers you know there's there's like there's like communication, there's networking, there's 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 like you can build a server, you can build friends, you can bring friends in. And the introverted feelers start their part there's there's lore, you know, there's things you can be interested in with the story. There's I think things you can be interested in in what things mean and, and what they mean to you, you know. And then from the intuitive standpoint, from the introverted intuitive standpoint, I mean there's the problem is with the introverted intuitive I'd say almost from the weakest point Minecraft is almost the weakest in introverted intuitive, but there's still at least there's RP no. there's RPG mode, you know what I mean? Like there there there's there there are ways you can use Minecraft to tell a story. You know, you can build a narrative and you can um, communicate with people, you know, in the, in, in, I don't a, know about it, about well, tell me, tell me how Minecraft affects the introverted intuitive, the, the extrovert, the, real quick, the extrovert intuitive, there's a lot of room for play. There's a lot of room for improvisation. And that's, that's really that I could have started on that because that's really the, the, the Minecraft is at the very most, it's, it's about improvisation. It's about play, but, but tell me, uh, cause uh, your reaction to the, what I th said about introverted intuition, I want to know. I want to know what what you think Minecraft does for introverted intuition. I think uh, uh, from your biggest uh, asset of uh, being a introvert intuitive uh, dominant uh, is the thing, the foresight, uh, 
I mm-hmm. think an introvert is intuitive that uh, has an idea. I can say, I don't know, I want to build uh, Hogwarts Castle. And seeing their building in Minecraft, I'm talking about, mm-hmm. seeing the building from the first, uh, when they put the first block, uh, probably mm-hmm. they can already see how it will look in the end. Sure, sure. Thinking about uh, also the metaphor you gave me to me in the last video. So I think that uh, could be the strongest uh, asset for the introvert intuitive in Minecraft, uh, seeing something that goes from uh, the ground to the final comple- the final uh, completion and the final building. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say that's a pretty strong asset uh, and a strong big uh, big attractive for introvert intuitives. I think that I think that that's something for ni users but i don't know that it's as much for ni dominance you know i mean you're right that you have to use introvert intuition to see that imaginary building that's going to be there that when you build it you know but introverted intuitives are interested in the symbols they're interested in what things mean when you get down to it what does that building mean or what does the what does what do diamonds mean or what does that ender dragon mean and and the problem is minecraft is a little bit short on meaning it's yeah. very strong on yeah. on like structure and and like substance and world and like exploration and building but it's a li- little bit short on meaning so it gets me in in all of those other ways but it doesn't get me so much in meaning, which is where I really want it. You know, as an like an IFJ, like the kinds of games that impacted me the most were like the Final Fantasy games and stuff, where, where it was like oh, uh, the huh. game was about the meaning. It was about what the characters were going through, and it was about what the story was about, and where it all ended up, and what the character arcs looked like, and how it all fit together, and how what it all meant. And then just imagining what the writers meant by what they created you know and 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 what the world and how that how it all fit together with what the protagonists went through and stuff like those kinds of things were the things that i cared the most about growing up and um i was really big into minecraft when it came out but i lost interest with it eventually because you know i wanted to I wanted to have, I wanted to experience something that was going to change me, you know, and that that was really going to make me see the world a different way because I went through something. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. So if it delivered on that, I would have, I would be, so, you know, I've been, I, I think I've, I've seen the Minecraft ending and there's some text and stuff like that, but it just left me wanting, you know? And, mm-hmm. like, games that really impacted me so strongly, like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy VII, um, even, la- you know, later in life, Mega Man 2, Ninja Gaiden, like, I don't know how to describe it, but just there's some games that hit me a certain way that made me feel a certain way and and told a story and let me see some kind of arc happen and let me be a part of that when it happened and then and then like feeling it emotionally when it happened i want a game that makes me cry (laughs) because it's hard for me to feel that way it's hard for me to like make myself feel that way i can't almost I you know and I think this is an FETI thing. I think I think TI users prefer that that they prefer TI have a harder time feeling their feelings or like ex- explaining their feelings or something. And then when they cuz so they so they want that. They like seek that out almost. And then when they can feel that, then they're like, "Oh, that ah, oh, it's so meaningful." <laughs> You know what I mean? That's so important also for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think ESTJs or ESTPs I think feel the same. I think they have the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as I said before, I have a hard time sometimes understanding how I'm feeling when I'm playing something that makes me feel something and probably represent unconsciously the same 
mindset I am feeling at that moment, uh, I say, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the really amazing game Journey. Have you played Journey? Yeah, I love Journey. I think I don't know. I I, I for around so when it came out, I loved it. it oh loved man, it. I I actually met the guy who made Journey. <laughs> I met Genova Chen. Oh, I went to California amazing. and I met Genova Chen. But it, like that that sand part where there's a sun and then you're just sliding down the sand and stuff. It's hard to put into words how you feel there. But I mean the dragon too. The yeah, the dragon. The yeah, mountain, there's... that's uh, right, and the ending, strong, we're flying yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. there's so many like parts of that, and how do you describe that? But, but I think it's like you're, you're. I think introverted thinkers, they are, they, they, uh, want to feel. They want to know how they feel about something. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's it it because introverted thinking is so good at playing devil's advocate. It's so good at thinking about well, what about this, what about that, what about this. But then when something really strongly affects you emotionally, then you're just like you. It's almost like a safety there. It's almost like oh, I know how I feel about this. You know, oh, I really do feel yeah. sadder about this or happy about this or something because I'm so used to feeling nothing about this. <laughs> I'm so used to feeling just neutral <laughs> about everything. Yeah, yeah I, I can definitely see that in me too. So yeah, yeah I agree. So yeah, introverted thinkers are very are very gray. I think a gray about everything, uh, most things. Gray about most things. And then when they get the hot or the cold, it's very exciting because you you're like, ah, I feel this. I feel that right now. I'm in that yeah, moment. Yeah. You know, I'm in that feeling. So I, I, I kind of seek out more emotional experiences in some ways because it's hard for me. Like, I'm sure introverted feelers are in that feelings, all in those feelings all the time. And they, they're all over the place and they know what their feelings are and they can feel that. And me, an extroverted feeler, I'm, I'm, I'm around other people and I can feel I feel I have learned to isolate myself from people because I feel so thrown off by other people's feelings and and so by going into the video game world and feeling what this artist created or feeling what this artist want me to wanted me to feel now I can feel that that, that feeling that I would have felt if I was such a somehow able to stimulate that within myself you know yeah definitely I can see that. I mean, uh, for me, video games was, uh, have always been uh, some kind of uh, it's the perfect medium to interface to, uh, because simply it makes me well live a life that I could never live. So the I could say the fear of missing out in the video games is. Uh, it's destroyed because uh, you can do whatever you want to do in video games and also uh, it's uh, really a strong medium to understand myself uh, because uh, sometimes I have a hard time seeing uh, myself objectively and when playing games like uh, choose your own adventure and seeing okay uh, aside from the fact that I like so much to experiment uh, so trying all the endings, uh, even playing as a bastard son of bitch, and so on. But mm -hmm. it, it, oh, it's so part of the fun. Uh, being in the part of the hero or the one who choose, uh, chooses his, uh, I'm gonna say it, his, uh, who writes his future for me, perfect example for one of my favorite games is uh, Dragon Age Origins. I played all types of adventure in Dragon Age Origins. I played as Bastard Son of Beach who let all the world go mad and uh, burn the village. Or uh, the hero who saved everything and played like a paladin. Uh, uh, lawful, uh, lawful good. Uh, it's mm -hmm. really a strong medium for me to interface to because uh, it makes me understand my feelings uh, mm -hmm. i can say it uh, mm -hmm. um generally 
this game that gives you the freedom to choose uh, one of my favorite genres I forgot to uh, to tell you before and it's uh, kind of funny because it's in contrast to what I said uh, to you so far mm-hmm. are the farming simulators mm-hmm. the idea of putting up a, a farm like Stardew mm-hmm. Valley is one of my mm-hmm. favorite mm-hmm. games mm-hmm. ever the idea of creating something uh, mm-hmm. uh, marrying uh, a character uh, <laughs> right in my life is something right. I really love Right. I'm a sucker for romance in video games. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I really like Star, Stardew Valley as well. Um, I, I mean, I lost interest in it eventually, but I mean, I, I was very interested in it. I, I loved um, Harvest Moon Harvest Moon back in the day yeah. uh, on the Super Nintendo. Uh, of course, uh, there was a Game Boy version, I think, that came out as well. Um and there's been subsequent games. There's, there was an N64 game and I think a few other versions of it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my daughter is really interested in it, in it, actually. She really loves it. Um, yeah. I, it's not as like open-ended as Minecraft is, but it's pretty open-ended. Um, I, think that, I, I, I think that that kind of game is attractive to a number of different types too probably yeah. for different reasons you know i think yeah. introverted sensors would probably appreciate the, that that it's always the same day like yes there's changes but it's like always the same um introverted intuitives i think would appreciate the ability to kind of plan ahead and and, and kind of think of where you want to go with the story and extroverted sensors i think would really ap- appreciate the the beauty of the game and and kind of yeah. the music and and um yeah. kind of what you can do and the sort of satisfying feeling of using the different tools and stuff like that um and and uh Extroverted feelers would appreciate. There's like lots of characters you can, get, can interact with, um, and introverted feelers can 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 appreciate. Like you can run it how you want to run it. <laughs> you can run your farm how you want to run it specifically. Um, and um, yeah, there, there's like yeah, it's a very PT PT Barnum thing. Just like Mine, Minecraft, there's something for everyone. Um, so I mean, there's some games like that 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 I think really I think the reason they succeed so well is because they do really appeal to all of the cognitive functions. They really do let you get to plan ahead and get to experience the 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 now and get to um, have some predictability, but then also some some improvisation and get to interact with other people, but also get to follow your heart. And so like by by having something for everyone. One, I mean, you really get to choose how you want to play it, um, and that maybe that's something that video game designers can can think about as far as like what they can do to attract the most people is if you can really uh, if you can really scratch all those different itches for people, then you can really get the biggest audience possible. Because you'll you'll attract is the widest range of po- of personality um, into it by by giving people kind of a social experience, but it's also somehow you're able to plan ahead, but you're also able to enjoy yourself and and all these different aspects of it. Um, yeah, I think the games that do the best will do all those things. Yeah. You're nodding, so I guess you're agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, my my game of the moment is uh, well, it's not of the moment. I, I've been playing it for a long time, but it's Final Fantasy fourteen. I've been playing that game for a very long time. Um, yeah, I wanted to start it too. Now I I don't have much time to do it, but uh, when I'm a bit more free, I wanted to do the free trial. Uh, aside uh, of Final Fantasy two, so uh, for me, it probably is a the best MMO, MMO right now around, it, around right now. It really is, and it's it's a staying power too, which is amazing for for a game to be able to come out for so long ago and still have that staying power. It's it's just yeah. unbelievable, um, especially considering how disastrous the initial uh, launch was. Um, 
but I've been playing Final Fantasy since the first one, actually, since Final Fantasy One, actually. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm almost forty, uh, so so yeah, I, I have hit a lot of long history with the game. Uh, but 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 I was so I played a lot of Final Fantasy Eleven. I was very impressed by Final Fantasy Fourteen, uh, not the one I, I played the one point about a, about six months and then I gave up and lost interest. <laughs> and then the two point came out and I was like, thank you, and I have stuck with it more or less since then. I've quit a few times and come back but uh i i do have a level level 80 white mage uh fin- almost finished with the shadow bringers uh expansion and coming up on the new expansion this fall which i'm excited about i'll probably play the, the sage um but one one thing that i i just interested in getting your your take on this um i i can wh- what do you think it is about uh you know, I, I can tell you what I think. Uh, wh- what I think is, uh, as an INFJ, what I, what I think I, I like about the series is um, there's a lot of character interaction and there's a lot of story, um, but it's also oh, pardon me, it's late, right? What time is it? What time is it? <laughs> it's nine oh nine my time. It's very late your time. Um, it's also it, in addition to all the story um it's also it also feels kind of safe being because it's a it's a predictable like you're gonna do this question you're gonna do this question you're gonna fight that boss and you're gonna that dungeon and 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 it's it's not like uncharted where 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 like the next turn is gonna be deadly you know it, it's it's a lot more safe so what do you think what do you think about uh why what why do you think an infj probably would appreciate that from uh you mean final fantasy 14 or this yeah in yeah final fantasy 14 which is a game that where it's very slow it's very meditative it's very contemplative it's very take it as you take it take it at the speed you want and uh, and uh, you know, there's infinite retries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. I don't ever have to worry about losing my game save, you know. Well, especially in uh, for I- INFJs, uh, I think uh, in this example, Final Fantasy XIV, but probably every kind of MMO around, uh, it's really strong uh, because it appeals. To all of the four main functions, aside from the shadow one uh, uh, and so on, but it appeals to all the, of the four main functions of the INFJ because it has an eye that gives that uh, kind of uh, foresight of how building, how to build your character, what mm-hmm. uh, uh, class you want to be, what class you can change, what you can change about your uh, the character aspect. Uh, uh, where is the faction where you want to fight, uh, where you want to go. So this is the kind of uh, planning that uh, introverted intuitives uh, like uh, a lot. Uh, it appeals, uh, of course, to the extroverted feeling because of the interaction with other people and uh, especially because it has PvP, but I think the main focus of these games are uh, PvE. So the idea of uh, teamwork, uh, everything having a uh, different uh, specialty a different preference a different approach uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, is uh, something that makes uh, the group uh, to win in Final Fantasy 14, group dynamics uh, for example, to, yeah yeah exactly yeah in, to win in Final Fantasy 14 you need the, the group to be unite mm-hmm, and work mm-hmm. well in their uh, place uh, so yeah definitely that uh, of course for extroverted feeling uh, mm-hmm. for introverted thinking uh, the idea of building your character, of course. I want mm-hmm. to put this stuff here, I want to learn this thing, I want to use this yeah. weapon, I want to use this class. So the plan, the mental planning of uh, how does your character could, could work and uh, from what he will benefit, from uh, what he could uh, be a specialist uh, and so on. Because generally I think uh, introverted thinking like so much being a specialist in what they study or what they do or uh, what they like. So, mm-hmm. and uh, in the end, uh, extroverted sensing, uh, because well, uh, the aesthetic aspect of Final Fantasy 14, it's beautiful. I mean, it's in so many different biomes, so many different uh, places, uh, so many different yeah. dungeons, features, yeah. uh, characters. Uh, 
and also because uh, you must be anyway with good reflexes and focused on what uh, he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And I think the strongest asset in these games is that you can play however you want to play, aside from choosing the class, you can play on a slow rhythm, you can play on a more uh, fast uh, and serrated uh, rhythm, like uh, just go, let's go doing three, ra three dungeon raids uh, in two hours. Uh, <laughs> and so, on. so I think it's uh, really strong uh, in the case of I and FJ, but I would say about for probably any single type for with their preference and so on mm. because it, uh, it those are kind of games that uh, appeals to every single function so something that you said uh, like stardew valley there is a bit for everyone uh, mm -hmm. a, bit, a little bit of every of everything for everyone mm -hmm. i think uh, that's why i'm thinking it's uh, pretty interesting for your personality yeah and interestingly too there there are other aspects of of final fantasy 14 that i like that are i can tell are not uh, not necessarily for my type but i still like them like there's a aspect of collection you know which i know introverted sensing is very would 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 prefer something like collection you know there's you can collect minions you can collect cards you can collect um th there's a few different things you can collect uh and there's a completion like you know you can get there's 300 of them you can you've got 150 of them you know um yeah. and uh yeah yeah i still like those things though <laughs> so yeah, uh so so interesting you know and i think also um well yeah 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 i i it's very interesting i I agree with everything you said. Actually, I think I think you're right. Um, it does appeal to those cognitive functions. So, I, th th there's one other thing, and I think maybe we'll end it with this one. But because we're at the 51 minute mark, <laughs> so maybe we'll end it when we get to the one hour mark. Um, do you think that? Do you think that when we play video games, we are playing th games that are easy for our preferred cognitive functions, so that uh, we can use those cognitive functions in a safe kind of um, how can I say it? Uh, I understand what you. Yeah, well, you understand what I'm saying. Okay, go ahead. You, you, if you understand, then I, because I, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to say. But if you well, understand, uh, to give you my example, uh, because I can talk easily about what I do, uh, I will definitely agree with you. I mean, of course, it depends on the personal character. I mean, if there is someone who is, uh, I don't know, an ISFJ but is uh, pretty ambitious, want to surpass his limits uh, and so on, probably he will in, he will, wouldn't really care uh, about uh, uh, what he plays because he uh, want to get better at everything, probably. Uh, but generally, I think uh, we naturally lean more towards the game that speaks to us, that uh, works for us. Uh, in my example, I love racing games because, of, you know, driving, uh, taking um, the curves, uh, going uh, full speed, uh, competing and competing with other people and so on. Mm -hmm. is something mm -hmm. that really appeals uh, for my extrovert sense in preference. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that's why, for example, I kind of suck off, uh, as, at uh, RT RTS because mm -hmm. I personally, uh, I think they're really amazing games, uh, but uh, it's uh, not uh, familiar with me. What do I mean? It's uh, much more hard for me to uh, play an RTS uh, rather something like, uh, for example, XCOM that is uh, still strategic. Uh, or Fire Emblem, it's a still mm -hmm. tactical approach, but uh, turn-based, because I have right. time to think about the, mo the moves uh, and so on. That's interesting. And, uh, and I think uh, generally, yeah, we probably 
uh, are better and probably more towards the what uh, makes us uh, feel satisfied in uh, in the games uh, you know uh, for example uh, I can definitely see a extroverted tinker uh, dominant uh, like uh, YMTJ or ESTJ playing something like uh, I don't know EVE Online because they can coordinate the team they can mm. uh, make the tactics they can uh, mm -hmm. choose how to attack uh, to approach and maybe they will have a hard time in games uh, more um, how can I say more uh, simply story driven without tactics uh, mm. I'm not saying that they won't like it because it depends on the person uh, mm -hmm. but generally I think uh, we lean toward more towards uh, what we like uh, right for example for me conceptual games like uh, Stanley Parable um, never really clicked with me mm -hmm. you know, because uh, it's something that doesn't give me much uh, that gives a lot of food for the brain uh, yeah you know, to think about it but right generally it's uh, not much of an action game yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope I answered your question. You did. You really did. Um, it actually made me think that maybe there's not many TE dominant kind of games out there compared to other types, actually. Yeah, because probably the TE approach uh, to life in video games is something more. Uh, uh, external to the gameplay per se but i think you know i think i think games are important for everybody i think games are yeah. really really important for everybody and and there's people who don't don't wouldn't agree with me necessarily but i think it's important because it helps you simulate it helps you you think about re possible realities and and helps you work through yeah. those um but also something interesting that you said, and I want to test this out on you. Do you think the NI users, introvert intuitive users, prefer turn-based games, and NE users prefer real-time games? Hmm. That's a kind of an interesting question. I'm just thinking about uh, my gamers' friends and their mm -hmm. functions. Uh, Because to me, and I'll just before you finish your thought on that, to me, I think NI users have to wait some to some degree until the moment comes, until they can see what the mo what the reality is, or what what the truth is, and any users need to uh, react. They have to react to the to what is happening, and then find the truth uh, along kind of along the way. Um, and it's not that, like, for example, ESTPs don't do a lot of reacting. Of course they do. But they are also NI users, so they they kind of use that similar sense that, that, that INFJs and INTJs, uh, ENFJs, uh, e ENTJs use of, of using introverted intuition to... Uh, uh, discern when the time to react is you know when or when the when the moment is right kind of and en uh use ne users uh seem to have to it's a complete improvisation all, all the way through you know all the way to the to the nth degree sort of so yeah what do you think about that idea about it, uh, I'm thinking about, uh, for example, a friend of mine, uh, ENFJ, uh, I, uh, one of her favorite games, uh, she plays a, several different games, but one of her favorite games is uh, Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think generally because uh, um, aside from adrenaline junkie games, uh, as I said, I like very much. Uh, uh, I think it comes down rather than turn based or action based uh, to slow paced or fast paced. Mm. And I probably will lean more towards uh, slow paced games. Uh, that's why I like life simulators a lot, I like mm -hmm. farming games a lot. Any, uh, since they are, their brain are a bit uh, uh, 
uh, under drugs, come, like the, it's a uh, brain under drugs, <laughs> so many inputs and so many, and so many, so many different ideas at the same yeah, time. Yeah. Probably it's something uh, that gives them oh, the complete freedom to explore mm-hmm. all the possibilities or something uh, fully fast paced, like, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm probably RTS games or I don't know, mm-hmm. because they probably could think a different approach. You know? Oh my God, I'm getting attacked by Zerg. What can I do? I can launch a tank uh, to them. I can yeah. five, uh, uh, five yeah. fire soldiers to burn the enemies and so on. So I think it, it comes down to this, but I'm not sure uh, if, if it works, like if, if it could be applied in general to an I versus an E preference. Hmm. All right, we're gonna think about it. It's been a, it's been a little bit over an hour, so I'm gonna stop the video soon. Here, we're gonna let the people at home tell us in the comments <laughs> what they think of all this, because. I, I feel like we could talk for another like five hours about this. Yeah. Uh, th- th- there's so much here, you know what I mean? There's so much to think about. Uh, it, but I'm sure that we're both gonna go and off on our own. And we're gonna think about it, and maybe we'll maybe we'll come back and do another video sometime. But uh, it, it it certainly is a lot to think about, you know? Like, what does it mean? What 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 do what do the cognitive functions mean in relations to what we like in video games, and why do certain types like certain video games? So it's it's very interesting, very interesting. But I, I appreciate the the time uh, that you've given me. I know it's late your time. What what time is it? It's probably got to be like three thirty four your time, something like that. Yeah, four twenty five. Four twenty five. Four twenty five. Four twenty five a.m. So thank you. Jacopo, I appreciate it. I could go on for all night. For <laughs> I, I feel like I could too. Um, but uh, so 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 I hope that uh, the viewers at home will will share their comments, share their thoughts um, on, on any of uh, the things we've uh, pontificated about, and we'll we'll see um, we'll see what they have to say. But I, I really do appreciate the, um, the 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 time you've given and. Um, I don't know if we've moved things forward in in this realm, but uh, it, we've you certain it's certainly been fun to try and to see yeah, what yeah. we what we came really? up with. So um, thanks a lot. Thanks you too, Dan. It was really fun. Don't worry about it. It was a pleasure. Likewise, likewise. All right. So so for the viewers at home, um, I I hope you'll please uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for thank you for joining us. Uh, have a good uh, rest of your evening, and witness no chase. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>